Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is the second video in my mini course on streams in Java. In this video, we're going to take a look at filtering streams and we'll also see an example of something called a mutable terminal reduction operation. So first of all, let's start with a really simple example. Let's create an int stream and see if we can filter out only the even numbers. We've already seen how to create int streams we can do it using the int stream class. You don't have to use the int stream class to create a stream of integers, but you can do. And we'll use the range method here. Let's start at zero and then go through to 20. And as we've seen, we could use the terminal for each operation together with system.out.println or rather colon colon print line to get a method reference to actually display these numbers. And if I run this, we're just going to get the numbers 0 through to 19. Now, what if we want only, for example, the even numbers? We can insert into the stream a little filter method, which is just called filter, like this. And now we need a lambda expression or some kind of appropriate method reference to actually do the filtering. Let's use a lambda expression. So I'm going to have a parameter here, which I could call number or n, or whatever I like, I'll just call it A, and we'll have an arrow, and then the implementation. Let's say A mod 2 equals 0. So this will only be true if we get an even number. And if I run this, we see that now the odd numbers have been skipped from the stream. They've been eliminated from it, and we are left only with even numbers. Now, one thing you might want to do if you're going to get at all seriously into using streams is know how to turn off the auto formatter if you use it in your IDE. So any clips, if I go to preferences and I search for format, then I can check out this Java code style formatter and let's click edit here and see what that says. And then if I go to off on tags, we can see that using these formatter off and formatter on sort of attributes or whatever they are, then we can turn the formatter temporarily off and on for a particular code block. And most IDEs are going to have a way of doing that. And the reason I want to do that is because what if I want to format the stream like this, which particularly if you've got several strung together stream operations, looks a lot nicer than if you try to put them all on one massive line. And if I use my code formatter now, which for Eclipse would be Control Shift F or Command Shift F, it's going to go back to how it was. So what I'm going to do here is put a comment in and I'm going to have at sign formatter colon off. So I'll turn it off there and then I'll turn it back on again after the bit of code that I don't want to automatically format because I personally do love to use the auto formatter. Just helps to keep things clean. And now if I run auto format with Command Shift F on my Mac, then it doesn't format it, which is what I want. So you're definitely going to want to look into that if you use a formatter a lot, or at all really. Now of course we're not limited to filtering streams of integers, we can filter streams of anything. So for example, let's take a look at filtering a stream of strings. First I'll create a list, let's say var list1 equals list of just as a quick way of creating a list and then I'm going to put some words in here like hello to you how are you today as we've seen we can easily get a stream from this using the stream method so I can say list one dot stream this is actually quite a convenient way to print out a list although we've not really begun to touch on the power of streams or indeed why you would use them but we're getting to it bit by bit so now we can just do the same actually as I did right here and just display those and if I run that we get all the strings in the list so hello to you how are you today now let's put in a filter here so filter and there are various possible methods that we could specify here via references but let's again use a lambda expression here. Let's call it s for string and we'll say s.length is equal to 3 and that's going to give us only the strings with a length of 3 as you might expect. 
So that's just you, how are you? You get the idea, I think. Now let's take a look at streams of more complicated objects than string. So I'm going to turn to my trusty person class that I use a lot in my videos. Let's create a class person up here. And I'm going to give person a private string name. And let's have a private int age. And if I right click here and go to source, I can generate a constructor using those fields. Get rid of the call to super because that's not really necessary. Let's have a blank line there. Then I'm going to right click, go to source, generate getters and setters. And I just want getters for these really. So we'll have get age and get name. And finally, let's right click and go to source, generate to string and make sure those are ticked and click generate. So now we've got a little person class that we can use in our streams. So let's create a list of people for a start. So I'll have a list of person. We'll call it people equals new. Let's make it an array list. Then we can add persons to this list. I'll just add the import command shift O on the Mac there, control shift O on Windows in Eclipse. And we'll do people dot add new person and let's have here Bob and make him 32. Now I want just several of those to illustrate what I want to do here. So I'm going to duplicate this. Let's have four of them. We'll have maybe Bob, Sue, Claire, Rog. And let's make these different ages like 63, 19, uh, 28. That'll do. And of course we can print these out using a stream and using for each. So I could do people dot stream dot for each and system dot out colon colon print line. You know the drill by now. And if we run this, we're going to see all our people down here, or at least we are if I get rid of that extra bracket that somehow crept in. So let's run this and there we are. There are our people, but we can of course filter these. So let's do dot filter and filter them, let's say on age. So let's call the argument pass to the Lambda expression P and say P arrow and the implementation is going to be P dot get age is less than, let's say 34. And then we should get everyone except Sue actually. So let's run this and there we go. And if we want to filter out Bob as well, he's the next oldest, let's say less than 32. And you can see how that works. It's, it's very intuitive. Now, what if you want to apply multiple filters? You can do that even at different points in the sequence of stream operations. Let's just copy this. And supposing we want two filters here. Let's say we want all the people who are over 19 initially. Let's try that. And that's going to look like this, except we also need a blank line here because Otherwise, the output is now very confusing. Let's put a blank line in. OK, so if we run it, this is what we're actually getting down here. And then supposing I want another filter at another point, I could use like a more complex Boolean operation. I could say and p dot get age is less than uh, 60. And that's going to work exactly as you expect. Well, quite often you want to apply multiple filters at different points in the stream. So I could just use another filter if I want. So I could say here, filter and p arrow p dot get age is less than 60, let's say. And then if I run this, it does exactly what you'd expect. Let's just turn the formatter off here because it is getting now a bit long and I'll put it on again down here. And now we can format it in a way that's considerably nicer, just indenting subsequent items under the uh, initial people.stream statement here. And I think that looks a lot nicer and a lot more readable. One thing to note about this is that if you have a choice of the order that you're going to put your filters in, you're better off first doing the filter that gets rid of the greatest number of items. So if this were to cut down the stream by a thousand items and this only removes two items, well, it's better to first remove the thousand 
and then remove the two. Because if you did it the other way around, if you first remove two items, then you've got to trawl through every single item again to apply the second filter. Whereas if you first get rid of a thousand items, that's a thousand items less than you then have to do the second time round when you're only filtering two. If you think about it, it's more efficient to get rid of more items first. But if your filters get quite complex, then you might want to create a an actual method to do the filtering. So let's put all the filter logic in a method now. Let's have a public static boolean filter people and that's going to take a person p and we could say for example return p.getName.length is less than 5 so that should filter out Claire here and p.getsAge is greater than 30 so that should remove Rog. So we should be left with Bob and Sue here. And of course, you don't have to do all this in one line. You could do it in as many lines as you want to make this method as complex as you want. And now just to see that in action, let's copy this. We'll have another system.out.print line here, paste it in, and then we'll get rid of this second filter. And this first filter, I'm going to replace it with a met method reference to this method here. So let's put in here, well, the class that I'm in is called app. So app colon colon filter people ought to do the trick. And I just want that to be indented a little bit because I think it's nicer like that. And then if I run this, you can see that we are left here with just Bob and Sue. So this is the kind of thing that if you're not really used to Lambda expressions and method references, it definitely looks cryptic when you first see it. But with just a little bit of practice, it starts to feel really natural really quickly. Now here, we're using the terminal for each operation to just print out our streams. And very often, there is a terminal operation that you can just use that will achieve whatever you want to achieve. But what would you do if you wanted to collect the stream back into a list, let's say, for example? And here we're going to have our first preview of a reduction operation. So instead of for each here, for each is a terminal operation because it finishes your stream and you can't then chain more methods after doing a for each. But we could substitute that for collect another terminal operation. And the purpose of collect is to collect your stream into some kind of data structure. And we can use a pre-made collector, a thing called a collector, we can do collectors dot to list like that. And that's actually going to give us a list back. So let's say var people two maybe equals all that stuff. And then down here, let's do sys out and people two. And if we take a look at that, you can see that you can see from these brackets that this is some kind of a list. I suppose it could be an array technically, but it's not. And it contains the filtered results. To make this a bit clearer, let's maybe specify the type of this. So it is actually a list of person objects. And we can see that this runs. So this is a reduction operation. Reduction operations combine the list elements into a single element. And another example would be, for example, sum or count, which we're going to see later on in this course. Here, we are reducing all the stream elements to a single list object, which happens to contain those elements, essentially. So that's why it's called a reduction operation. We're reducing the number of elements to one by combining or reducing all the elements. In this particular case, it's a mutable reduction operation because what we're left with is a mutable list. And to prove that, Let's add another person to people2. So we can say people2.add and we can have here new person and let's add Gary. Sometimes I feel like I'm using um, English names from like 1980 or something, which is when I grew up, but that's okay. And uh, if we run this, we can see that we have successfully added Gary to the list. So this is returning a mutable list 
And it's a terminal operation because we can't string more stream operations after that. We can't do, we can't chain on any more methods after a terminal operation like for each or collect. I want to show you one final example here, which is going to be an example of turning a map into a stream because we've seen numerous examples now of turning lists into streams, but clearly we, we didn't really need to go to the trouble of defining a person object. Often it's just more elegant and nicer and it works out better if you do do that sort of thing, if you've got several attributes like name and age that you want to associate together. But since we've only got two attributes here, name and age, we could actually have done this sort of thing using a map. So let's create a map down here. First, I'm going to have another blank line in my output, just so that things don't get too confusing. And I'm going to create a map. It's going to be keyed on string and it's going to have integers in there. So that's the name and the age. Let's call it map one and set that equal to map dot of. And then we want some entries in there, like for example, uh, Simon, he can be 25. He'd probably be 55 with a name like Simon. I don't really keep up with names though, so <laughs> I'm not really sure. Let's have Gary, he can be 30. Let's have Raj, he can be uh, 24. And then we're going to turn this map into a stream. So we can't directly turn the map into a stream because what sense would there be in that? But what we can do is say map1.entryset.stream so we can stream the map entries. And let's just do for each here. And then what you can do, which is kind of the most obvious thing to do in a way, would be, okay, you get each entry in the map and you could use those to print out the keys and values. So we could do e.getKey. Let's have some punctuation there in our output and add on e.getValue and take a look at that. I think that should work. Let's run it. Of course, if you just wanted to literally see the entries and you don't really care precisely how they get formatted, another thing you could do is this. Let's turn this map into a stream again, turn the entry sets into a stream again. Remember, you can't iterate over a stream twice, but there's nothing to stop you getting the same stream repeatedly from some collection. And we could simply supply system.out colon colon print line right here to for each. And then it's going to print the entries using the default method for printing them. And to make that a bit clearer, I think what I really need in here is a blank line. And there you go. So it looks almost the same as, as what I did myself. It's just a difference in separating punctuation there. And just a quick reminder that I have a bunch of courses on caveofprogramming.com and I'll put a 30% off link to the Java 11 for complete beginners in the description of this video because that's where I cover things like method references, lambda expressions and streams if you want a really structured approach to the whole thing. I also have many free courses on there. Now, if this seems difficult, I always recommend typing it out and just practicing it. Don't strain your head over it too much. It's way easier to just practice this stuff and you, you will gradually start to understand it just from typing it out, really. You'll, you'll see what kinds of things you can and can't do with it. And as we go through this course, we're going to increasingly see really useful actual things that you can do with streams because at this stage, you know, you're probably going to think a little bit well, why would I even bother doing these things? But as you start to see the power of streams more and more, you're going to end up wanting to use them in your own Java programs more and more, I think. So that's it for this video. And until next time, happy coding.